Previously on the Ballad of Officer Superstar. Who are you? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Despair creeps into you. Oh no. Getting fat on your weakness. You're still coming up with sentences. That's oh, a step up from time. Man, we died again. Here we are, just before all the stuff with the phone. And obviously, you know, it all went bad. Uh, so, instead of doing the phone stuff again, even though I'm super eager to do it, we're gonna head back to regular Martinez, I guess the uh, harbor area, or the waterfront area, whatever it's called. And we're gonna do a bunch of other tasks that we got while we were in, uh, inspecting the fishing village and, and over here across the canal. I had actually intended to spend a skill point and do magnesium based life form, but upon further checking, it turns out that we didn't get that thought because of all the strange reloading and, and so forth. Uh, I guess I, I, I thought we had it. I really wanted to do it. In part because my, lo my logic was that our guy, Superstar, his whole life is dependent, as we've seen through the course of the playthrough, on having magnesium. It With the low volition, which means the low morale, he has always been dependent upon the magnesium count. And so I thought, okay, we'll, we'll do that. But we don't have the thought. So what I will do is, when we do get the thought, I, we're going to take it right away. And I might even do... My other plan had been to go to the frit and get a bunch of magnesium because that's what that thought suggests you do. So this kind of throws a giant wrench in the little plan I'd come up with. And I, I basically never planned these episodes. So this is the first time I did that. And already right from the get go, it's all messed up. Anyway, let's we're going to try and play our tape in here that we found. The boomboxes wait on the shelves, and your boombox, that gold and amber, Harmon Walshi, stares at you longingly with its tape real eyes. Oof, 12 real. That's, uh, that's actually too expensive because we need some money to spend on our supplies, so I guess we'll have to come back. I had hoped we might be able to use the boombox just here without having to buy it. So let's go to Gart, or the William Rags. We'll go give the bird to Gart. Then we'll still go to the Frit and buy healing supplies. Oh, we can also go to this Kanima and report the body on the boardwalk. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Oh, we can contact the Jamrock Public Library, too. This is awesome. I need to report a dead body on the Martinez boardwalk, Alice. One moment. You can hear her shuffling through some papers. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? An unidentified middle-aged man, height 170 to 175 centimeters, dark hair, medium build. Looks like he slipped and fell through a hole in the boardwalk and hit his head against the metal bench. We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. And kebab. Any signs of violence? Have we given up on there being a sequence killer? I suppose. No, it seems like it was an accident. No field autopsy necessary. Uh, agreed. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? He was wearing boots, trousers, and an old leather jacket with a bright blue lining. I found a library card from his pockets. Any information on the library card? It's from Central Jamrock Public Library. It belongs to someone named Billy Mijon. Good. You have a lead. Yes, thank you, Alice. We have a lead. Do you and Lieutenant Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? We're taking the case, Alice. I have assigned the case to Lieutenant King Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. Thank you, Alice. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Well, apropos to our last conversation, how about you connect me to the Jamrock Public Library? Hold on, officer. Uh, 
I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call in two, one. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? I'm looking for any information that you can provide on Billy Mijon, a reader. Billy, Billy Mijon, you said. Give me a moment, I'll have to check our database. Please check that database then. On Moreau Drive in Central Jamrock, in a darkened hall lit by orange desk lamps far away from the noise outside, a middle-aged man taps commands into an old radio computer. A printout falls on the desk. Behind him, a lonely reader scours some dusty bookshelves, looking for a paperback. You know, every time Shivers gives us information, it's really interesting. So I'm going to see if we can add more to Shivers through equipment or through clothing, I guess. I don't know that I want to spend points on it, but we'll see. I'll reread the description. Yes, hello. Are you still there? I found Billy Majon's home address. Is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. Okay, we'll take what we can get. They're too poor to have a phone line. Yes, home address is fine. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Cape Side Apartments, it says. That's all. Well, at least we know where that is. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? Oh, no. Maybe this was his boyfriend? <gasps> no, it couldn't be him. It couldn't be him, because we would have recognized him. Do you have any other information on Billy Mijon? It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Do you know someone who was? Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Mijon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87. But we don't have it yet. Good. You have a name now. So Billy Mijon is a woman, not a man? How did your colleague know that it was her husband? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Interesting. Do you know the husband's name? Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Can Marie describe to me what the husband looked like? Marie! She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. And what was he wearing? Does Marie know? Uh, one second. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Okay. Thank you. That's all from me. I have no other questions. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Anything else you need from me? I'm done with the radio for now, Alice. Thank you. 57, over and out. Well, we have another lead, but let's go talk to Gart. You'll notice I'm running now. That's because I was afraid to do it before, but uh, Ratcliffe in the comments suggested that it's not something I need to be afraid of, that it won't have any deleterious effects. Okay, let's talk to Gart. Give him that bird. Can I help you? Gart, I found a new bird for the whirling. What is this thing? It's no biggie. I just thought it would look nice on the wall. I'm that kind of cop. What? The interior decorating kind? You know, I'm sorry. This is actually a nice bird. A competent piece of taxidermy. Well, I can fix it to the plaque and have a new bird in the establishment, I guess. So, I don't know. Thank you. I'm going to go with thank you. Wow, Gart. You're, you're super grateful. I feel good about our work here today. It's all about the little things, like bringing people random stuffed animals. <laughs> Kim, you smartass. It's not actually about that, but he liked it. Okay, what else can we do? Oh my gosh, we can talk to Lena. I completely forgot. Oh, hello, dear. There you are again. I ran into your husband on the coast, Lena. Goodness, how is he? Did he say why he hasn't returned yet? The old woman clasps her hands together over her blanket. He's fine, ma'am. As we had suspected, he couldn't get back earlier because the water lock on the canal was broken. Now he's just finishing up somewhere. Oh, yes. That's my morale. He's bound to catch a cold staying out there for so long. He already has. But I am so relieved to hear that he's okay. Thank you for putting an old woman's heart at ease, if even a little. Well, you're quite welcome. You haven't, however. There are dangers out there. Our aging bodies fail. Her heart won't rest until Morel 
is safely back with her. I can understand that. You never told me you've seen the Phasmid, Lena. Oh, you don't want to hear about some old woman's ramblings. Oh, I really do. Reflexively, the lieutenant read his, his familiar notebook. Well, it was summer. I was building a racing track out of sand on the beach near a tall stand of reeds. Quite a tall one. Many times my height, I remember. When, all of a sudden... Wait, where was this and how old were you? Ah, I'm getting ahead of myself. I was five and a half in Betancourt in the suburbs. My grandmother had a summer home there. Betancourt got bombed in the war. It used to be quite near, circa 20 kilometers from here. Then what happened? The strangest moment of my life. I looked up and one of the reeds moved. Not like a plant, but like a living thing. It stood up and looked at me. Its body unfolded like some antique toy. I've never seen anything like it. She had no fear, just surprise. Yeah, most five and a half year olds have no fear. I didn't know this can happen, so I reached my arm and touched the thing. It felt just like a stalk of reed, but it moved, swaying, towering above me. After a while, 20 seconds, a minute maybe, it left, went into the reeds. Towering above her? How big was it? I mean, she's five and a half. I thought this was a little bug. Whoa, did you follow it? I tried, but I was only a child. There was mud and high water. I couldn't see it anymore. I was just standing there, knee deep in mud, looking around me. Then what? I ran back home to my grandmother and asked her if reeds could walk and told her they were looking at me. <laughs> of course, she just laughed at me, but I knew what I'd seen. Oh, how interesting. For years, it was a story I told at parties when I wanted to impress boys, that sort of thing. Of course, most people just took it as a strange, amusing anecdote. So did I, honestly. But then I met Morel. We were on our first date when I told him my story. You should have seen his face. He said my descriptions matched the phasmid down to a T. Its white marble limbs, the way it moved. Wow. So that's how they met. This is beyond significant for them. So we already knew they're on a date. We're not going to ask about that yet. Its limbs are white? Not all of them, as far as I remember. Some of them on the inside like stalks of marble, if that makes sense. I guess so. How big was it? It's hard to say how big things are when you're quite small yourself. To me, it seemed to be taller than I was then, but that's probably not the case. Oh. Hmm. What if it is the case? Yeah, that would be super. You were on a date? Our first, yes. The sigh is tender, yes, but tempered by something else. A thought she can't express. Interesting. Well, that is interesting. Maybe you imagined it, Lena? Of course. I've thought about it. But Morel says my report matches with the others. And I'm sure I hadn't heard of the Phasmid as a child. Nor had my mother or my grandmother. You know, if we could find this thing, if this thing is actually in the game, and it's huge, that would be super cool. So how did I know what to imagine? It was only when I started telling my story as a teenager that boys would tell me, Lena, you trying to tell us you saw the insul Indian Fasmid out there in those reeds? Get out of here. <laughs> they just give me a cider and ruffle my hair and tell me to stop dreaming. But I saw it. Wow, really neat. Kim, what do you think of this? I thought it was a wonderful story, man. He closes his notes and gives her a simple smile. Yeah, he still isn't a believer. He's a skeptic. Thank you for sharing this with me. You're welcome, sweetie. I do appreciate the chance to relive it whenever I get one. It was just... <sighs> such an impossibly sunshiny day. So warm. Nice, that's a cute story. Well, let's see, what next? How about, oh, we see what's going on with these guys. Uh, asshole and horseface. Again? I can't believe this shit. Oh, nothing. Okay, nothing from you, asshole. Sit back down. Yes, 
what is it? Let's ask this. Are you by any chance working class? Well, uh, raising two children and half a husband on a patrol officer's wage? Yes, I guess I am working class. Do you want to rise up and tear down the entire fucking system with me? I'm going to say this because besides the fact that we have Markovian socioeconomics in our thought cabinet, we also have something like a 19 communism. So I think it's worth trying. No. Okay, sort of. But not with you. Like you are now. Don't take this the wrong way. Okay, I'm not sure what other way we should take it, but okay, goodbye. Can we get on the karaoke stage? Not yet. Okay, let's go to the fritit t t t t buy a bunch of healing stuff. Hello, racist pig. Okay, so first... Oh, we have tear. Let's trade in our tear. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. Cool, we got a Do you ten. know what you should do with that money, kiddo? You should buy more alcohol. Enter the endless cycle of consumption. Thank you, Electrochemistry. Noted. Okay, so first, we're going to buy some healing stuff. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Let's buy some Hypnogamma. Okay, here. I hope Saint Baptiste makes you feel better or something. I'm inclined to buy even more, but why don't we hold on to our money? But we do need some more health healing, so let's buy some Druamine. Okay, here. I hope Saint Baptiste makes you feel better or something. Okay, I think that's good for healing stuff. And we have cigarettes. We could buy some alcohol. Oh yeah, you know what? Let's buy some alcohol for idiot doom. A story. colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. Again, I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. I wonder if the wine has more than one use than the Pilsner. Oh, I bet it does, but in terms of giving stuff to Idiot Doom Spiral... Oh, we don't want this. Oh, I forgot to sell our blue medicine. Let's find out. Let's get the red wine. Will we have enough to buy... You know what? We don't have to necessarily go back to Idiot Doom Spiral right now. Here you go, mister. That's good for now. Let's take a look. Oh, we got four uses out of the Commodore Red. Oh, how many do we get out of the bottle of wine, I wonder? We have enough for the raincoat. Is there anything more we can say to the, the um, clerk? Is this about the questions again? Because I don't really know anything. Uh, no, sorry to bother you, critiqued clerk. Just like in real life, the money went pretty quickly. You know what? I want to try cutting that lock again now that we have the gloves that will give us plus two interfacing. We have to go to the apartment building for Billy Mejon anyway, so let's do that. Okay, we're back over here. And here is our nemesis, this door. And we're going to put on the... Gloves that give us plus two interfacing. Okay, so now we have plus two interfacing. So our interfacing is now at four. So let's see if we can cut this lock. Oh, I forgot to equip the This door cutters. has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. Actually, I want to do this in case somehow an Inland Empire thing comes up. This door has been oh. closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says number 11. Oh, shoot. At this point, I'm not willing to burn a point in interfacing. So let's undo what we just did. Put our bag back in our hand. Hey, come back here. And put our other gloves on. We were wearing these Ultra Series gloves. So, we need to go to 33B. Hey, come on, guys.
guys, what are you doing? While we accomplished a lot today, this ending may feel abrupt. I apologize for that. Delivering the death notice in this episode would have meant either rushing it or running the episode far too long. It will be the very next thing we do. Until then, please remember to spay or neuter your pets, but not both. <laughs>